it's the final season. So it's, it's a pretty long, long one. We're like taking our time with this one. Um, and then uh, got another HBO movie coming up Are in you the summer. kind of sad to be saying goodbye to, to Tyrion? I mean, he's such a beloved character. I mean, I know everybody, a lot of the people in this room are obsessed with the show, like myself. Yeah. Uh, is it kind of, yeah, is it sad? Yeah, it's bittersweet. It's bittersweet. always time to move on with everything. Uh -huh. um, so it's the sad part of our business. We get, you know, pockets of great people for a short amount of time and then you have to move on and it's always heartbreaking especially when you've spent more than a couple months with people but uh yeah it's time you know and they're actually they're they're, they're uh story-wise not just for our all our lives but i think if they went any further it would start to it, it's the perfect timing to end it sometimes shows stay on a little too long yeah. the jumping the shark thing yeah i've uh, think there's going to be a bittersweet ending you know, I've always taken my influence from J.R. Tolkien, and if you've read uh, Lord of the Rings, um, Sauron is defeated and the ring is destroyed in the end, but it's not a happy, happy ending. There's, yeah. there's a real um, sense of things lost, too, and, and I found that very powerful and very moving, and so I think my ending will also have a, a bittersweet tone. I hope if I can bring it off the way I want to bring it off. The Wars of the Roses are, are the probably the single biggest influence so I've drawn from French history and Scottish history and other things but at the center of it all is the Wars of the Roses and you know I have the Lannisters and the Starks and in real life it was the Lancasters and the Yorks but and I've, I've changed things around a little I've mixed and matched I've taken a bit of this character and a bit of that character to create my own characters who hopefully stand on their own but the influence of British history is huge. Hey everybody, if you guys didn't know, Sundance is happening right now, so Peter Dinklage is up there promoting another movie. Naturally, because it's the final season of Game of Thrones, people are asking him all about the episodes, so he's talking about bittersweet ending. I also added that George R. Martin bittersweet ending interview for context. That was actually done a while ago, but Peter Dinklage actually did give us some functional information about what's going on with season eight, and just to provide a general update since we got that last big one from the TCA's panel. So if you're finding me for the first time, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. I'm also doing a new round of the DVD giveaway at the end of this. So the funny thing about this Peter Dinklage interview is that you have Elle Fanning off to the side just like giggling, maybe because she thinks it's funny that people keep asking Peter Dinklage about Game of Thrones, or she's just so excited herself about Game of Thrones. Like you have to imagine, Peter Dinklage is a great actor by himself, but when he's talking about Game of Thrones stuff, pretty much everybody in the room gets excited because everybody in the world wants to see the final season. But in addition to all the bitter sweetness that he's talking about, he also says that currently they're about halfway done through filming, which also lines up with things that Sir Davos and Sophie Turner said a couple months ago about what the schedule would actually be. They'll be filming right up until the summer, and then they'll spend the rest of this year in post-production. I've already done a video for what the president of HBO said about their 2019 premiere plans and what he said about the prequel series, so I'll link that video at the end of this. But thankfully, even though they haven't given up any big spoilers or anything like that, they've been pretty forthcoming about what the timetable is, what they're doing right now, like the really big moves that they're making. When Peter Dinklage is talking about them taking their time, I know everybody wants episodes faster, but what he's talking about is he just means that they're not rushing through scenes, like they're taking the time to actually get it right. So if somebody just has a completely shit take, they just try it till they get it right, which is what you would typically do on a movie set, like you just keep doing it takes David Fincher style till you get something that's really good. Just goes back to the quality over quantity scenario, which is really where we are with season eight, because Dan and Dave were like, yeah, we could stretch this out for another 10 years if we wanted to. And if you don't remember, there's this now infamous quote from the head of AMC from a year or two ago who said that The Walking Dead could go on for another 10 years. So just keep in mind the fan backlash behind that series this past year and what would potentially happen to the fandom if HBO decided to stretch out the Song of Ice and Fire narrative for another 10 years. That's what the prequel series are for. Like, you want another 10 years of Game of Thrones, but you don't want them to destroy a really awesome story in pursuit of that. HBO also created a little bit of confusion recently when they also said that there would be no spin-off series. But in context, what they meant when they said that is that none of the pre-existing characters would spin off into their own series. Like, there would be no Daenerys series set after Game of Thrones following Daenerys' character. There would be no Jon Snow series. 
So just to be clear, they're just differentiating between that terminology, spin-off meaning spin-off with existing characters. So the prequel series technically are not spin-offs, but a lot of people refer to them that way. So just to be clear, there will be another Game of Thrones series, but it's going to be a prequel. It won't be a spin-off. Do not worry, it sounds more confusing than it is, but Peter Dinklage puts it pretty succinctly when he says that they would be headed for a shark jump scenario. But the bittersweet endings that he talks about and that George R. R. Martin talk about are a little bit different in context. When Peter's talking about bittersweet, he's acknowledging, yes, it'll be bittersweet for the characters, but mostly he's talking about for the actors in real life. They've been working together in close quarters for so long. Some of the younger actresses like Maisie Williams and Sophie Turner grew up on the show. This was taken, I think, back in 2010 before season one started. Look at how young all these Stark actors look. Now, obviously, some of them will go on to other different series and they'll work together in various capacities. But none of them will be together in the way they are for Game of Thrones right now, which happens with a lot of long-running TV series. So it's kind of sad for the actors, like, we'll see each other again, but it won't quite be the same thing. When Martin talks about the bittersweet Tolkien ending, he's not talking so much about plot. It's not going to be a carbon copy of Return of the King. He's talking more about a hollow victory, scorched earth victory, like the scouring of the Shire. So you beat the ultimate villain, but at what great cost? So that gets into more of what the series is actually about, like from a conflict standpoint, and why I think the show opted to elevate Cersei to secret big bad status instead of the Night King, which it's been marketing as the main villain of the series. So two different things, like HBO, like when they send out marketing materials, they put the Night King's face on it, like, oh, we have to unite against the Night King. But way back during season one, there's this clip where they're talking about what the show is really about in context with all this supernatural stuff that's going on in lands of uh, perpetual ice and cold, a supernatural threat is stirring after centuries of sleep. The things you speak of, they've been gone for thousands of years. It wasn't gone, old man. They were sleeping, and they ain't sleeping no more. Game of Thrones is a fantasy world, and there is magic, but it's not about monsters, it's, it's about humans. So think about that when you're theory crafting what the ending of the series will be. For example, we talked about the list of directors for the final six episodes, what types of episodes those directors have done in the past for Game of Thrones, and what it says about their season eight episodes that they're doing. So this is the list, and I'll preface this by saying that even if there's not a giant pitch battle in every single episode, there still will be crazy shit going on every single week. But just look at the episodes that Miguel Sapochnik is directing, Mr. Battle of the Bastards, Mr. Hardhome, those episodes are probably the two big final battles, one with the Night King and one with what I think will wind up being Team North versus Team South. Jamie had that speech at the end of Season 7. What do you think is going to happen if they do defeat the Night King? They're going to turn around with their combined armies and come south here. Remember, it all goes back to what they said. There is magic, there is a supernatural threat, but at its core, the series is about humans versus humans. So let me know what you think about that in the comments and whether or not you believe that Cersei will wind up being the real big bad of the series and if there will be some sort of scouring of the Shire type moment, Scorch Earth victory, what that might actually end up looking like. Like remember Daenerys' vision? That would be a version of the scouring of the Shire whereby they're able to win the day but King's Landing, the North lie in ruins after these big final battles. But because, like Peter Dinklage says, they're about halfway done through filming, they'll start doing more interviews like this and they'll start teasing stuff out. We might even get a trailer at Comic-Con this summer. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight. Hold up.